Hey guys, welcome to the Acrylic Asylum. I'm Mike Ferris and I'm going to be getting started on my 11 by 14 inch hardboard canvas and what I've done was I took an old painting and I resurfaced it by just covering the whole thing with raw umber and then I let it dry and then I used wax transfer paper and my stylus on a piece of paper that I taped up here for the traceable image and proceeded to try out the image here to transfer it and you can find this image down in the Patreon link in the description box and there's also a short video on how I transfer images to my canvas. So getting started, I'm gonna have on my palette here some phthalo blue, some ultramarine blue, phthalo green. This is raw umber, burnt umber, cad yellow, just a little bit of orange, cad orange to be exact, just a little bit of violet, and of course titanium white as always. I'm gonna go ahead and do the background here and some of it's going to have some details where it's hard lines and then other times I'll use a natural round bristle brush to get some of this out of focus look. And I'm just going to basically take my number nine here, natural round bristle brush. You can use any size you're comfortable with. A number nine is a little bit bigger as you can see, it'll cover more ground. And I'm basically just going to put some different varying colors and tones, um, just some earth tones in to get the background started. So. With that, I'm going to take a little bit of this ultramarine and I'm going to take a little bit of this cad yellow to it. And let's see, just a little titanium white. Just looking for kind of an army green to start with. And I'm going to say you know, something like this. Okay, you can do this at any tone. Again, this is just background, so it's not too crucial. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with, let's see, something like up, uh, about up here. And this is a dry brush because this is going to be out of focus. And I just want to lay some color in for now. I'm not worried about any details. Like I said, a lot of this is going to be out of focus, which means no details and fuzzy lines, which I can produce with this natural round bristle brush very well. And I'm just going to come down. You can just kind of throw this around, however. There's not really, like I said, details are few and far between. I'm going to leave some of this dark showing because it shows, of course, shadow and some of the gaps in between some of the background forest foliage here. And I'll just kind of throw this around. And I'm not worried about the color again because I'm going to go on here with just different highlights and I can always go over some of this and knock back some of the color or adjust it and leave some of this showing. And... In turn, that gives me my variety and all the things happening. So, just gonna do something like this for now. See, I got these little shapes, and I don't have to follow them exactly. I can just pretty much fill in off of this traceable here, just generally the shape here. What really matters, of course, is our mushroom because this is gonna be all in detail and super awesome when it pops off of there against all that blurry background especially so we'll get to that okay just gonna load up more paint and see I'm just using the brush and just the edges of it these bristles they really get it done for scrubbing in really well okay, something like that maybe okay so again this is just base color for now not worried about any details. No details yet. Okay, see, as you can tell, I can change the value by adding just a little bit more yellow. So I'm just going to vary these tones back and forth by adding more or less yellow to this ultramarine blue. And sometimes I'll add some white, maybe some raw umber to dull it down. So anything you want to do, just keep variety alive. I'll tell you, in paintings, it's the variety that really makes a picture pop and be what it's supposed to. And it really does, does its thing really well that way. Okay, so I'll just kind of scrub in. And, you know, you don't have to do any of this in focus if you don't want to. You can make the entire background blurred out if you want. It's totally up to you. But I'm going to do... Like I said, some of it in focus, some of it blurred out, just to give you guys a a rundown on just the different ways you can make those effects. 
And of course, anything you don't like, just take some raw umber and cover it back over to any degree. And you can use it like an eraser, push anything out back that you don't feel should be there. And it's all good. Just totally go for it. This is freestyle. This is anything goes. You don't even, you can sit here with your eyes closed if you want to and just really just go for it and you'll be surprised at what you might come up with. So see, maybe that's a little bit too much highlight. I don't really care right now. Like I said, just getting some color in. And see, I can make this happen over here maybe. Something like that maybe. Maybe something over here. Okay, so let's get more color now. I'm going to get more ultramarine, more yellow. And I'm going to go in here, just sort of knock back some of this maybe. See, anytime you don't like something, just change it. All good. That's what I love about acrylics. Anything goes. You can fix anything, anytime. You don't have to be all stringent and, oh my God, I put the wrong color down. What am I going to do? No worries. What you do is you cover it up. You change your colors. And you just kind of throw this in with it. And throw some more over here. Put some of that right there, maybe. Okay, something like that. Now... I want to add a little bit more white to this, a little bit more blue, so I get a different tone yet. I'll just kind of go like this. Just kind of bring it to the mushroom. If I go into the mushroom a little bit, it's all good, and I actually will go up to the line, maybe a little bit past it, because when I go to do the mushroom, I don't want, I don't want it to look like. I paint it around the mushroom. I want it to look like the mushroom is in the picture with the background behind it. And of course, background always comes up to everything. All right, so I'm gonna go now just a little bit of this violet. That probably is a little bit more than I needed there, but it's not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of white there. I'll get a little bit of this raw umber just to dull that violet down a bit. Okay, a very muted light violet. And I just kind of want to throw that in. Kind of right here. Just show some kind of reflective light maybe coming through a little bit. Maybe just something like that. Very subtle. Okay, I'll put a little bit of that right in here, in fact. Maybe just something kind of like that. And look how cool that is. I mean, it's just all these different blends of colors. And I, again, these natural round bristle brushes, they do such a wonderful job blending colors and giving these gradients and these really awesome effects like this. This is super awesome for clouds, fog, out of focus looks, all that stuff. So here we go. Now I'm going to get some more ultramarine, a little bit of white. So I want this blue sort of hue. You know, throw some of that in, maybe right here you can see just a little bit to add to that reflective light there coming through. Okay, a little bit up there. Yeah, maybe some right there, I don't know. However, you can always cover it up, all good. All right, so now what I want to do is take a little of this raw umber a little bit of this yellow, and I want to get titanium white. You see that really makes a, a muted, sort of br uh, warm brown color here for some more foliage here in the background. It'll show up against this dark raw umber, of course. And I just want to throw some of that in here. Very light pressure with my brush. I did load up some of the paint. I didn't tap much of it off, but it's all good. And see, I can even tap some of this in like this. It gives a different sort of foliage effect. And again, if you don't if you don't like your taps, take some raw umber and tap back over that and you can open some more of this up and actually have more of a finer looking foliage if it gets too clumped up for you there. So again, anything you don't like, take that same effect with an opposite color and go back over it. 
and you can actually get the effect you really want. Okay, so something like this. And because it's back here underneath in the shadows a little bit more, I'm going to go ahead with, let's see, I'm going to go with some phthalo blue and some raw umber. Essentially, that makes black. And I didn't want permanent black because that's too black. And I feel like it would have kind of eaten up and distracted the eye a little bit from everything. And I don't know, it just this is just more of a subtle black when I make my own black like this in some of the pictures that I do. I feel like permanent black is more for like real extreme dramatic effect or like maybe a cartoony like painting. But when it comes to realistic and especially landscapes, I like to make black out of the blue and out of the phthalo blue and the raw umber just because, again, it, it's more of a subtle looking black. And it just sits better with everything. So, let's see, there's too much blue in that for what I want. So I'm going to get some more raw umber to that. And let's try this. Let's see. Raw umber, phthalo blue. There we go, maybe something like that. Just kind of throwing this back in. So it may take a few times maybe to find your color. And it's all good. Okay, more raw umber into that. And it just knocks some of that blue out of there a little bit. and makes it more of a, a darker value. Okay, something like this. However, let's see. Let's grab some more of this raw umber and blue together. Phthalo blue, that is. brush. I don't want it too heavy. Okay, however you want to do this. Just kind of adds a little bit more details. Not so much details, but just more of kind of what's going on here. It's more foliage, more of a foliage look, I think, when I can knock some of this back and put in these little things to make it look like background leaves and all that. Okay, just something kind of like that. All right, so I'm gonna clean this brush now. So I've got two uh, jars here. I've got one for knocking the paint off and then I've got a final rinse jar so I don't drag any of that dirty water into fresh new colors. I'm going to take my angle brush here. I've got my number eight, and this is going to help me to get these nice crisp lines. I'm going to do some of these in-focus ones down here where I've got these this basic general shape laid out, and I'm going to do some leaf details, and that will contrast off some of this blurry stuff and kind of bring this more together. So I'm going to take that same phthalo blue, and actually I'm going to dip my tip of this brush into some water because that'll help give that crisp line even better when I have a little water on the brush. See, and hence why I wanted the dry brush for the natural round bristle brush because that's what gives that fuzzy line and that a focus look, but this has a little water on it so I can give that crisp line. And that's really the only difference on focus and out of focus really is water, no water, and the kind of brush you're using. And that's about it. There's really no magic secret to it. So I'm going to go just kind of with the tip, just kind of like this. 
and actually let me get a little bit more paint here okay and so just kind of something like this So you get a little bit more water on the brush. See a little bit more yellow and I can change up the value just a little bit more and get more of a green. And have that show up just a little bit better there. See, so yeah, just kind of something like this. Yeah, not much on the details, just a little bit. Again, background, not a big deal. Because once we get this mushroom all filled in and this all this all done, this background Tony is going to be less looked at, I guess, if that's the word. Okay, just going to get up here with that. And just kind of fill this in a little bit like so. So see, you can see the little brush strokes here. It has more detail, of course, than this. And it really adds a nice little ring to this picture and puts more contrasting elements in. And I believe the more contrasting elements you can put in a picture, the more that you can draw the eye in and make it that much more interesting and fun to look at. And... I gotta tell you, as this comes together, as I proceed into this, it really gets fun to look at because it's like it's happening right before my eyes as I'm laying everything down. And that's one of the things I love most about painting is watching it come to life like that. And let's see, I'm gonna go like so. this let me see we got some nice brush going on see really simple stuff we're just now I'll go a little bit heavier here and then I'll go very light out here see and I can get these little leaf details just kind of like this heavy heavy pressure and then at the very tip I can make that nice triangle shape or that point at the end and Give that real nice leaf effect. Okay, a little bit more water on my brush. Okay, let's get some more color made up. A little bit more blue, a little bit more yellow. It doesn't have to be the exact. In fact, I like the changes of the variations of values because, again, that adds all the depth and dimension. See, like this. When you get it mixing in, it just brings it out more. Okay, something like this, maybe. Okay, and then here's another one. Right next to this one here. Okay, something like that. And you can put these wherever, however. I don't even need the traceable in some instances. I'll just, maybe I'll just do something like this. And a little bit more water. And again, if you don't like something, cover it up. All good. And let's see, I'll go boom, boom. Just 
just however. And let's see, there's going to be one, I think. It's going to be more yellow involved. It's going to change it up and warm this green up even more. Let's see, I can wiggle, wiggle, pull through, and it makes a nice sharp tip. A sharp edge there. And I can really get in here and get these nice crisp lines going like so. Kind of something like that, maybe. Doesn't have to be exact or anything, anything special, really. Very easy to paint, very easy to use these brushes, nothing to it. Just put some paint on the brush, and you really can do some things. They just kind of lay down and do their thing for you. Okay, just kind of like this. And something like that maybe and then I don't know wherever however all good boom 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 okay something like that maybe okay so there's that and now if I want I can get some yellow now and I can get some titanium white and this really adds a nice ring to it I can come in here and just here and there but not everywhere as my motto goes if you've watched my videos before meaning I take a value and I put it literally here and there but not everywhere meaning I don't cover all this up but I put it in certain places however randomly and in this way it brings out the life of this painting that much more showing its depth dimension highlights shadows and it brings out 3d realism and all those things when you let all these values play together like this so just kind of like i said just hit it here and there and let some of this other value play and just adds a nice ring to that look at those highlights now it looks like you can see what's happening now and it also adds more detail to what you're doing and of course more interest to the eye and it makes it more fun to look at all right something like that and i'll just wipe that down a little bit show some of this Okay, and let some more of that value up. Okay, just kind of something like this. Just throw this stuff around. Cover it up if you don't like it. If you have a highlight on this green you don't like, take that same green, that darker green. Whoosh, all good. You can just, like it never happened. Put those highlights wherever you want. Okay. Uh, I think over here a little bit, maybe. Even though this is blurred out. Just putting some highlights in without much water on the brush and look I can even use my finger and dab it down and that also blends it in and see it kind of makes it look like some of these but blurred out back here and it just really tells us what's going on with this painting and helps make more sense of it okay just like that and I'm just gonna run some of this but not all the way and just kind of use my finger again. Like I said, believe it or not, finger painting in acrylics really helps to blend stuff out, as you can see there. It's all good. Nothing wrong with that. Totally do what you got to do. 
Okay, maybe some more highlight stuff, and I want to keep this blurred out, so I'm just going to sort of do this without the water on my brush. It kind of dried out, so if you take a brush that has a little paint left on it, even if it's not the natural round bristle brush, it'll still act like that brush in the sense that it'll still give you that fuzzy line and that blended effect, and in turn give you that out of focus look that you want to have there. Okay, I'm going to clean this brush now. And every time I clean a brush, I always like to take my fingers and kind of do this. And it just kind of takes the excess water out and it also keeps the shape of the brush intact so that it lasts longer that way. Okay, I recommend that. Always kind of reshape your brush after you clean it off, after you're going to set it aside and not use it for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go back now to my natural round bristle brush, only this time I think I'm going to take a smaller one now because I'm going to be in some smaller areas with this number one natural round bristle brush and I'm going to take some raw umber, some yellow, a little bit of white, and I'll darken that a little bit more. See something maybe kind of like this and I'll just kind of tap the brush off. I have a little tablecloth here I can use to do that and I'll just kind of do something I don't know so maybe some leaves on the ground or just some more brown brush or something who knows but it's going to be out of focus so I'm just going to sort of scrub this out and put some of that in here even wherever okay a little bit of white now and I'm gonna tap like that and I just kind of want to just sort of tap some of this in Shows maybe a little bit of details of uh, something happening, maybe. Maybe a little highlight back there on this, I don't know. Okay, and now I'm going to get a little bit of this cat orange and some of this burnt umber, just a touch, just some white here, and I just kind of wanted to give it sort of a orangey hue to it, not much, and just kind of want to fill this in, I don't know, it's like a little leaf or something there maybe, and with that, I'm going to take some burnt umber to it. And I kind of want to come in here, just make a little shadow. I don't know, maybe there's a little fold in this leaf here. It's kind of like this, maybe. I don't know. Maybe something like that. I'm going to clean this brush now. Okay, and I want to stress that when you're using these natural realm bristle brushes, you really want to dry them out really well. If you have an old tablecloth or maybe an old shirt that you don't care about that you want to wear when you're painting, of course, so you don't ruin your nice clothes. Use something to dry it off really well. And you'll be able to maintain those gradients and, you know, that focus or out of focus that you want to get. Okay, I'm going to take some no titanium white go back into that brown color that I made with the yellow and the burnt umber there and I want to go in here just kind of throw a highlight on that see how that makes that pop a little bit now you got your mid-tone you got your dark and then you got your light and it's all playing to go that gives it that 3d look kind of looks like a leaf that's kind of folded up a little bit and just kind of chilling in the forest there I don't know, something like that. And what's cool is 
I can take some more cat orange. Not a whole lot. And I can just put some of that in and sort of line this a little bit with that color and it really makes it pop a little bit more. See, it gives it more interest like that and gives it more of a reflective light. Sort of realistic look in that sort of way. Okay, and while we're at it, I might just throw some of this orange in some places just to kind of bring out some of these areas so it doesn't look like I just took brown and just kind of threw it all over the place and it's just like the same color all over. Then that way it doesn't look like I just tried to fill it in and didn't really know what to do with it. See, but if I have these changes, it looks very purposeful and like this is something that was meant to be. And it's kind of like you can get away with that. Even if you don't know what it's supposed to be, just throwing different values in and looking like it was on purpose in some way really can tell the viewer's eye that, yeah, there's something going on here. This was on purpose and it goes with what you see instead of, what's that color doing there? It looks like somebody splattered something there. So little tricks to get away with stuff sometimes if you don't know what to do. Just throw different values together and just I'm telling you it'll just work out. <laughs> it, acrylics really is your friend in that kind of way. It's kind of like getting by security. You just kind of act the, act the part. And kind of like a guy walking around at work all day with a clipboard in his hand. Maybe he's not really doing anything, but just the fact that he has a clipboard and he's in a suit walking around makes him look important. <laughs> so... In the same way, maybe this is kind of how this is. You can kind of get away with some things. All right, so, and I'll throw some of this highlight around. Like I said, it really buries suspicion that way. All right, so in here, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not too thrilled with that, so watch again. It's all good. If you don't like something, I'm going to take some of this phthalo blue again and raw umber. A very dark value, the darkest value that there'll be in this piece. And I'm just come in here and sort of knock some of this back. However, if I knock too much of it back, I can always add it back in in a different way. See, it just kind of creates some shadow and kind of breaks this up and, again, buries suspicion. You don't have to wonder what something is. It just fits, you know. It just goes well with it. All right, something like that, maybe. And without cleaning, I'm going to take, again, some of this raw umber and go into this lighter value here. You know, just kind of mix this up. And you got some dead things maybe, or maybe you got scorched by the sun there. See, in that kind of way. Just kind of brings it together a little bit better, I think. And also what's helpful too is if you have something that's kind of out of place, maybe a value or color, if you add that color here and there in some other places, it really brings it in again a little bit better, uh, better than that. It improves the view. And again, keeping that suspicion out of the picture where you don't have to wonder what's going on, but it's pretty clear what's going on. Unless you want to riddle your audience, then by all means, do that. Do what makes you happy. But in this case, what I'm trying to do is show realism and you know keep the what's going on questions out of the out of the mix. But that's just me. All right, I think I'm gonna go with that. That's not much to it. Just a little background there. Just a couple brushes, a few little strokes, some different value changes, and knocking anything back you don't like, and there you go. 
Okay, so moving right along, let's get to our mushroom now. Um, I'm gonna start with pre-making some of my values first. I'm gonna take now some phthalo blue. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not phthalo blue, ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna start mixing with this, some phthalo green. Actually a little bit more phthalo green because blue is a very strong color. Actually, maybe I'll just put a little bit more blue in. Okay. And now just a teeny bit of raw umber. That's just to dull this down, really. It's not really to change it to anything, but just to dull the, what I have already. So as you can see, it's a very dark, kind of turquoisey green there. And now I'm wiping my knife off and I'm getting quite a bit of white. Okay, so something like this. And I actually want it a little bit more color than this. So I'm going to add more of this ultramarine, more of this phthalo green, and more titanium white, and a little bit more raw umber. Okay, that's perfect. This is what I want right here for a base color and for a good amount of this value to be in the mushroom cap. Okay, so I'm just going to pick it up, scoop it up like this, smash it down, go back and forth like I'm playing hockey. As you'll find sometimes if you don't mix this up enough, you might run into pockets of color that didn't get mixed and then it ends up being a whole different value along the way that you didn't want in your color because some of it was hiding and not all mixed, so it's good to do this. Get it all up there, and then look, I'm just gonna set it down right there. So that's one value, okay? And now what I wanna do is take that same color, and as you can see, I'm gonna have to lay down more color out of my tube, so that's good. The thing I don't like to do is waste color, so I don't like to put down more than I need, but if I put down less, I can always add more, it's all good, so. Just a little saving tip there. All right, let me get some of this raw umber now to dull that back. Okay, so essentially I'm making the same color, but I'm going to change it here in just a second. By adding some yellow. Quite a bit of yellow, actually. Okay, and this is for my highlight colors. And here's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to add some more titanium white to my palette. And also, I need to add more ultramarine blue. All right, let's go with this now. I'm going to take quite a bit of white now. And like I said, this is going to be the highlight color that I'll put onto my cap here. Let me go with a little bit more yellow. I want to really warm this up. Okay, something like this. So I'm going to stick that right there. Okay, so I've got that color made. And now what I want to do, i got to get more yellow now. So again, I'd rather run out of color and have to put more down than put too much down and not know what to do with the rest of it and have it get wasted. So... I don't mind putting more color down for sure. Okay, I'm going to take some yellow now. 
and I'm going to take a little bit of this raw umber to it, not much. As you can see that really dulls that yellow down quite a bit. Right, I'm going to take some white now. I want this very light, dull yellow cream color here. Okay, something like this. And I'll go ahead and stick this right there so it doesn't mix with anything else. Okay, so there's that. And now for the stem, I'm going to take now some cad yellow. Let's see, some phthalo green. Just a little bit there. And take some raw umber to dull that down. A little bit more raw umber to dull that down. Let's see. Not too, too much. But I'm going to say something like this. Okay. I'm going to take now some titanium white to that. Okay, so perfect. That's what I want right there. And you don't have to get these colors exactly like mine. If you want to, go for it. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't... I'm not a big stiffler on getting colors exactly where the point I'm splitting hairs. Um, I'm just getting them close. Okay, so something like that. So we've got, you can see this is almost the same as this, but not quite. And we've got all these different values now. And from here, it's going to be a lot easier to mix from here instead of trying to make all those and mix them and change those. So as you can see why I made these first. It really does give me what I need for this. So with that said, I'm going to take my number 14 flat brush here. I've got a nice uh, edge for this. It's fairly new. If you don't have a flat brush that's intact right, like this, I recommend using an angle brush. And it helps get these nice crisp lines and all the details. So I'm going to start off now. I'm going to take this color here. This very light turquoise color. And I'm just going to load it up. And I'm just going to block in right now for this. So I'll just use the edge of my brush. Let's do something like this. And then I can pull this in like so. But look at that crisp edge that I get to get with this. So nice. Again, use an angle brush if you don't have a nice flat brush like that. Maybe it's worn out from too much use over the, over the times. Because, of course, brushes do get worn out and you do have to replace them. So if that's the case, I hope you have an angle brush or something that will give you a nice crisp line like this. This is... It's really going to pop this off of this against all that background super well. All right, so just something like this. All right, so again, getting the edge. To be intact here, just like that. All right, let me load up some more of that paint now. And 
and if you get too dried out, I'm going to dip the tip of my brush into some water. You don't want too much water because if you do, it'll underbind your paint and it'll end up pulling it off. And you'll be basically left with all these different holes and transparent areas that you got to come back in later when it dries to fill it in. So try not to get too much water at once. You can always add more water, but see like this, if you get too much water, it can kind of do that to you. But if it's not too much, you can always come back over and pull the paint back over those areas that get left open. But yeah, and that was just barely dipping the tip in. You really don't want a whole lot of water at once. Okay, so something like this. Getting more paint off my brush there. All right. If for some reason you go outside your lines, it's all good. Again, just use some background color, raw umber or whatever. Maybe some green if it was like going into some of your foliage or whatever and just knock it back. It's all good. All right. So I'm going to leave this open here just for a minute because it's going to be a little bit different value since it is kind of in the shadow area. So I don't want that same value to come down or I'll lose you know, depth and dimension and all that. Of course, if I block it in all the way, I can just take a value and change it, but um, I'll just go like so. I'm gonna get a little bit more raw umber now to that same color. And I'll do this. See, so it's not quite as vibrant, but a little bit different change up here. Now, let's see. Let me get a little bit more raw umber into that. Yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, something like that. And I can use the corner of the brush, too. Just kind of something like this. See that? And if you're not comfortable with this, you can always use a number two flat brush if, the, if that using this larger brush is kind of intimidating. I know it can be at times when you're in smaller areas. It's easier to go outside your lines, of course, with a bigger brush. So, you know, do what you need to do. Find what's comfortable for you. I kind of just don't care anymore because I've gotten to the point where I've gotten very comfortable with just painting overall that I doesn't bother me to use a bigger brush. So, and I don't want to have to clean this off and fetch a new brush and load it up again and all that. So it might be just laziness actually on my part. But I just find that if I can do it and get away with it, why not just stick to it? If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So, <laughs> so there's that. And I'll just kind of sort of dust this up a little bit, use my fingers so I can kind of blend it up a little bit, like so. Yeah, just like so. Okay. And it just kind of shows shadow there. Okay, so now I'm going to clean my brush. So I'm going to get a different value now going. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit more ultramarine a little bit more thalo green and some titanium white over here see that let me get a little bit more color here 
little bit more blue. I want this a little bit darker now. Let's see. Ultramarine, ultra and uh, phthalo green. Okay, a little bit different value there. A little bit more blue again. A little bit more green. A little bit more green. There we go. You can see the difference here between this value and this value. I sort of want to throw this up here. And again, if I don't like this value, I can just cover it back. All good, but let's see. Yeah, up here, I want it a little bit darker. So now with acrylics, as I said before in other videos, I like to base coat something that is the general color overall before I start trying to figure out details of you know, final colors and where it's going to be darker or lighter because when you have a coat already laid down and you put another coat on it, the more layers you build with acrylics, uh, with acrylics, oh, I can't talk, whatever, <laughs> um, it, it just brings out more saturation and more realism. It makes it look more full and um, it just adds more pop to it in that way. And that is... What I just love to do is make a picture pop and give it dramatic effect and all of those things. I mean, if I'm going to paint something, I want it to really pop out and say something. So as you can see here, that looks, gives it more of a look to it. And I'm just sort of, as the paint runs off the brush, where I wanted it heaviest first, I put it up here, as you saw. And then I can run that down very lightly barely touching the canvas as Bob Ross would say two airs and some hair uh, two air what does he say two hairs and some air <laughs> the tongue twister I can't say it right you know what I'm saying just barely any pressure and I can really creep this over that lighter value and really blend it in well and it just gives it that nice gradient so over here, I want to load up some more of this paint. I'm going to have it get even a little bit more darker over here a little bit. Okay, something like this. And I'm going to start coming down and getting the shape of this going. So that's important to follow the curve and not lose the shape going on here. Okay, and then under here, I just kind of want to take some of that. I want to leave some of this gray, more grayish tone, but I want to add some of this, just kind of like that. And leave some of this open like that. There we go, something like that. Again, just here and there, but not everywhere, not covering up all that gray. We're just sort of taking it down like that, okay? And now I'm going to start really getting the shape of this going here with this darker value. See, like that. That really starts to come across like that and see something about like so okay and I 
sort of want to blend this again down a little bit. That way it's not so wowed out with the lines being too obvious, but it looks like it's coming down with the mushroom as part of it instead of just these lines kind of painted on it, if that makes sense. Okay, something like that. And and I want to start to curve these. And a little bit with something like that. Okay. Now I'm going to clean my brush again. Okay. Dry it off. And just leave it kind of damp. But again, I don't want it too wet or it'll take the paint off. And as you saw before, I can get those holes involved. And I don't want that. So now I'm going to take this light value here and I'm actually going to add more yellow to this and I don't have any more white so I'm going to put again some more white so something like this okay get a little bit of that color there Okay, just a little bit and and I'm gonna go something like something like that see we get these little highlights now in there and these little things and again don't worry about it don't be so oh my god about it because Again, if you get a mistake or if it goes out of whack or whatever, just take that value. Let this dry. Take that value. Cover it up. It's all good. You can always knock it back. I know what you're thinking. I don't want to have to knock it back. I just want it to work the first time. Everybody does. <laughs> it's just the, the thing that we all want. We want this to go right the first time. But it doesn't always work that way, but it's all good. Just learning to enjoy the journey and be a little patient and understand that it can always be dealt with in a very graceful, effective manner. And for me, it's enough to take any kind of frustration or edge off if, it's, if it doesn't happen right the first time. Okay, so see these highlights here are really starting to come out. Okay, something like that. And you can see these values. I've got the mid-tone, I've got the dark, and now I've got this highlight color, and they're all playing along now. And this is totally what we want to do. See, and I kind of want to just fade these up. And it's okay, because I'm going to take this color and come back over just a little bit and around it and sort of settle these in a little bit so they're not so, you know, obvious and... They don't look like they're like painted on, but it's like part of the mushroom in its natural state. And it gives it more of a realistic look that way. See, and if I push harder with the brush, I can get a fatter line. And of course, if I just barely any pressure, I get a nice thin one. So just kind of mix these up and vary them. That adds more realism as well. Okay, I can do it like this if I want to. Uh, just kind of randomly, just here and there, let some of this show through. Cover some, but not all. And I'm going to get a little smaller as I get over here. Because see, that kind of looks like it's going back. Gives it that 3D realism. Okay, so something like this. And then up here, I wanted to do something kind of neat. It's... Gonna give these little shapes up here something. Let's see. Yeah, these 
broken up lines here. It's okay. I can just use my finger and get them off if I don't want it. I don't like that. Move that up, okay. And let's see, something maybe. Kind of like that. Okay, it just kind of adds this little dip sort of deal here in the mushroom. Add some uh, some texture there, so it's not just this flat painting. Okay, and so again, I want to just sort of take these up, sort of blend them up into this a little bit like this. Okay, just very light pressure and with very little paint left on the brush, I can take these little streaks here, these highlight streaks, and just sort of fade them up up into this guy here so you just kinda like that all good so you just like that and it's starting to look nice I like it okay so what I want to do now is take a little bit of this ultramarine and phthalo green I say ultramarine, yeah, ultramarine and phthalo green. It rhymes, so I thought I thought I said it wrong for a second. Uh, let's go with that. Let's get a little bit of more of this raw umber to it. Let's get a little yellow, so we can get that green hue back. Okay, so it's kind of this darker green like this, and right in here, I kind of want to throw. Some of this in like that, see that? Just sort of this darker stuff here in between up here. Okay, not too dark, but just keeping it subtle, yeah? Okay, and maybe a little bit of that up here. Not much. I just kind of want to blend this down at the very top into that darker um, value that I made there. See, kind of like that. And I sort of want to come back over this just very lightly almost in a transparent way. I'm just barely touching the canvas and I'm adding some of this dark hue over here. See something like that. So see how it adds just this realistic coloration to it. It's not just one solid color. And if you, if you, you notice when you take an object and look at it from different angles, the color values are going to change every time you do that. Even if it's a blue car or a yellow banana or whatever it is, you'll see a different type of yellow against a another side of the banana that'll look different from the rest. And again, those different colors and values is what tells our eye that it's three-dimensional and that it's got the texture and the depth that it does. Because otherwise, as you know, it's when everything's all the same color, there is no there is no dimension it's all lost because everything's the same there's no interest anymore so as you can see i'm taking now just some of this darker value that i made here and i don't want a whole lot of paint on the brush i just want a little bit because what i want to do is i want to settle down like i said some of this see some of these and it makes it look like it's like blended and faded into it so it looks like it's more part of it instead of just painted on it gives it more of a realistic look this way okay so just little things like this you can use your brush very lightly 
with just a teeny bit of paint to do so much. It's amazing how you can change a painting from flat and unrealistic to very natural and very realistic with just a little a little effort. And honestly, it's that little effort that makes everything do what it does to give that natural three-dimensional look to it. And this is this is how we do it. <laughs> See that? I'm just settling this down. Just kind of running my brush when it's it's just dry. There's barely any paint on the brush. I'm pretty much just moving the paint around that's already here just a little bit. Like I said, to kind of settle that down and make it more natural. See, like that. Look at how that just that just brought it together so much better that way. See, and I'll do the same thing up here because this looks a little more unnatural in a way. But you see, just like that. There it is. Okay, anything, anytime, anywhere. Cover it up, blend it back, settle it down. And every time you do this, every time you put a new layer down, it just gets better each time. I want to take my smaller number 12 flat brush. I want to go in here just a little bit. And I want to take some more of this, but I want to add more raw umber to it. Actually, I want to add a little bit more blue. blue. A little bit more phthalo green, a little bit more blue, so I get this yet darker color here. And I kind of want to just do something like this. Add some dark stuff here and there. And this is going to really be um, some reflections of forest trees and stuff that are fl reflecting off there. So this dark right here that I'm putting in is going to really contrast against the direct highlights when I use titanium white to show the sky kind of in between these trees. So essentially this is foliage with this dark value that I'm putting on here that's reflecting off of this nice shiny mushroom. And this is what's going to make this look very shiny, very bright, and give it those effects. So a lot of times people wonder, how do you get something to look really shiny? It really is reflections, like I said, like this, and adding lights and darks together. And then with reflections, if you have more detail as far as not, uh, lines not being fuzzy, but more hard crisp lines, it gives the impression that something is more shine than dull, if that makes sense. You know, like people would say in the old days, I want my I want my shoes shine so much that I want them looking like mirrors so I can see my reflection. And of course, the more you can see your reflection in something in a surface, the shinier the shinier it appears to be. And so, in the same way, if I can get this on here and really show some details like this. That'll really take off. Put a nice shine on this guy. Okay, so let's go like this. Okay, we'll come back to that. I know it kind of looks a little rough and questionable, but trust me, when I put the highlights on, you're going to look at this and go, man, that looks really shiny. <laughs> I'll just let that marinate for a minute. I'm going to clean my brush. I'll come back to that. Let's move right along. Let's get some other stuff blocked in here. I'm going to keep the same brush, actually, because I'm going to work into some smaller areas, and I feel like this number 12 flat will allow me to do just fine with that. So let's go into our other value now. I'm going to go and take, to start off with, I'm going to take some of this raw umber, and I'm going to take some of this value that I made here. And I'm going to start off, you can see it's a little darker than this. 
because I'm going to be starting underneath where there's more shadow, of course, when you come up into the mushroom and then lighter as you get out. And again, these value changes is what's really going to show all of the shadow play and this three-dimensional look that this mushroom is going to have. So with that said, I'm going to take this value now and just sort of fill these in. Yeah, you use the edge of my brush here and I can do a really fine job here of getting that in there. And even use the corner of the brush. So just like that. Okay, and don't worry about too much if you're if you got showing uh, canvas showing because again with acrylics as you know your first layer it always has you know that transparency look and it's not your final coat of course so I just more or less want to get the color on there in between these I want to leave a little gap here a little dark gap that's gonna really work in my favor to show the separation between these and the shadow and the dimension and the depth and all that so I'm not going to go all the way up against it of course if I do that then I'll lose where my shapes are and I can always put in darks again to separate them if I do do that but I want to keep it separated like that okay so let me just go like that and then Again, like this. And don't worry if you get in here, of course, because we're going to cover this up with another value, so not too critical there. Okay, and in between these, I want to put something of a little triangle the very edge or the very corner I should say of this flat brush something like that see that that really adds some interest there and some more of this inner mushroom effect here okay so something like that all right so I'm just gonna fill this in this more a little bit darker more dulled down color to start with like I said here close to the mushroom where it's more in the shadow there and we'll change this value here in just a moment okay and then over here as well and if you're finding that ergonomics aren't very friendly to you today turn your canvas don't be afraid to do that put it on its side turn it upside down whatever you need to do don't let anything tell you that true painters have to kill their wrists in order to you know to be a real painter or whatever it's you don't have to do that painting should be fun it should not be painful and agonizing so do what you gotta do at some point, if I feel that way, I'm going to turn mine if need be. So, like that, I'm just going to go like that. Okay, I'm going to load this up again. Paint's getting a little bit. There we go, see that? Sometimes you just got to load your paint again. You get too little on your brush when you're trying to block in. You won't block in sometimes too well. It'll be too transparent. So, as you can see, I'm going to go back over this now. This is more like a half coat of paint because there wasn't enough paint at first. But now that I've reloaded, we'll make this an actual full coat. Okay, like that. And... See, and again, leaving those gaps. Just like that. It 
it is a bit difficult sometimes when I'm painting to give a good view because I'm literally like sitting off to the side so that I can show you guys how I'm doing this instead of sitting right in front of it like I would normally do so it's kind of like if you've ever drilled anything before with a drill it's like trying to drill something at an angle that is kind of like a circus act I guess sometimes cuz you got to you got to angle yourself in a way where you got to get to it so in the same way I'm willing to do this because I really want to show you guys how I do this and how to really use these brushes and how effective it is and simple it is. I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, I just don't think I can do that. and I can't even draw a stick figure. And I'm like, well, you know what? Neither can I. I mean, a stick figure, I guess you can mess that up, but believe it or not, painting is easier than that. It really is. I know that sounds weird, but there's really nothing to it. You put some paint on the brush. You just load it up and you just drag it on the canvas. And then, oops, I don't like that. Oh, well, let's just get another value and cover it up. And by the time you're done, it looks like a professional did it because the fact that you can just cover anything anytime means that you don't have to be stuck with what you do. And in turn, that gives the playing field plenty of room to really learn how to paint and make your mistakes and get better at handling the paintbrush and all that stuff. So that way you don't have to live with, well, maybe next time. I'm here to tell you that if this is your first time, today is the time to do it in a way that's going to make you happy. And it's today is the first time that you can get this right because you don't have to live with what you do and you have plenty of room to practice anything you want to practice so by all means make your mistakes have fun making them it's all good all right just a little bit more paint now i want to get this more filled in Okay, just like that. Okay, you can see it's more saturated now, more filled in. And boom. Okay, I'm going to clean this brush because I want to get my lighter value now because we're starting to get away from the shadow area and out into the light. And again, keeping that three dimensional deal going. So I'm going to take now this lighter more yellow and let's go in here now and because it is a different value here of course I can go all the way to the edge but I will be coming in there with a darker value to go in between these because again when I get that dark value in between these it's really gonna show the 3d effect of this underneath part with shadow play and how that works here to do that so Right now, this is just blocking stages, not getting too concerned with details just yet. That'll come in due time. Thing about acrylics, you don't want to go for details and final color all at once. It will frustrate you, believe me, because acrylics just does not work that way. It's not designed to be your final anything at, at first. So let's. Just again, just blocking in. Okay, and again, I want to leave this little gap here. Because I don't want to lose these little things here. I don't know what you call them. These little, uh, I don't even know what to call them. <laughs> I'm not a biologist. I don't know. All right, so let's get this filled in there. I'm thinking, let's see, I can go like that. All right. 
Now, again, where I have these gaps here, in between here and here, I'm going to stick a little triangular deal here like this. And that really adds, again, some really cool stuff like that. See that? Gives it that mushroom fantasy look there. Okay, and then the little guy right here. Even those darks and separators there. Okay. And... that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so something like that. Okay, going back into some more of that color. And let's see. Okay, just using the corner of the brush again. Okay, a little something like that. I'll get in there and clean that up a bit. And let's see, I want to go right there. Again, another coat there. See that? It just really saturates it and brings it out that much more. And right here, I'm going to take now on the bottom of these darker ones, and I kind of want to do this deal where I fade it up into that darker one. See, kind of like, kind of like something like that. So just a little bit, just a little kiss of this highlight right in here. See, kind of like that. Sort of gives it that little yellow hint to it. Something like that, maybe, yeah. Okay, so, again, let's get in here now.
on that color now. See, I gotta load up my paintbrush a little bit more. And I can get more saturation there, more color, more flow, all those things. So, you know, you might find that you have to do some things in this craft repetitively. And as one of my favorite painters, Painting with Jane, she is excellent. Check her out if you have never checked out her channel. She does some excellent tutorials. And she'll use that phrase, go into my zen mode. <laughs> I love it because it's so true. I'll be sitting here doing something over and over and I'll, I'll just trance out and just kind of find a relaxation in what I'm doing and it is soothing actually it is quite soothing I just sit there and it's just kind of this calming effect that I get from it it's just like not like I'm gonna fall asleep or anything but it's just kind of nice it's like this relaxing place that I go to so just thought I'd throw that out there and let you all know kind of what this repetitive stuff does to me at times. It's not a bad thing. A lot of my stress, if I have some, will come down a lot. Absolutely love it. Alright, I'm going to take this actually and fill this in a little bit more there. See, just bringing it closer here, making it more full. And you can pretty much play with these, make them however. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but you can definitely do it exactly like I'm doing. And again, that's what the traceable image is for, to really help with the drawing process if you guys would like to be able to lay this out first. And of course, drawing it on paper and then cutting it to the size of your canvas and then doing the grid method like I explain on these traceables when you get access to them. It really saves on erasing your canvas or having all this chalk mess all over it. You know, if you find yourself needing to make uh, a lot of uh, adjustments when you're drawing it out to lay it out first. And for those that can draw really well at first, maybe you don't need the traceable. But I'm going to be honest, I need the traceable because I, I really like to draw what I do first because with paint it's like... Yes, I can cover it up and do anything I want, but at the same time, it does take some more time and some more paint to do that. And I really just want to have my parameters, you know, just kind of put in place ahead of time. I'm not a big fan of drawing, I'll admit. Um, I'm actually, I like to have everything laid out, like I said, because for me it's... It's really about the painting, putting the colors together, mixing them up, and playing values involved with each other, and more of that, uh, more time spent on that, and less on actually drawing. But that's just me. That's just me. You do what you want to do. This is your craft. It's important that you're enjoying the journey that you're on, and not letting what somebody else does or thinks deter you from that and especially away from something you enjoy or how you like doing something to do a way that maybe you just don't like doing at all or enjoy doing so maybe with other things it's more critical to do things the way it should be done because you know we're talking about you know more serious matters in life but for crying out loud this is art this should be fun <laughs> There's nothing that's going to happen to you or anybody else if you don't do it the way somebody thinks you should be doing it. So, I'm just going to hit some of these highlights you can see here like that. See, that just kind of really brings it out, I think, a little bit more. And 
you can see that shadow play now involved. It looks a little bit with these different values, how that really plays in and gives it that 3D effect. So yeah, just like that. Okay, something like that. Okay, and see with a line that doesn't look all that great, I can always come in there and fix it, see? And right in here I may have covered up some of those lines that I wanted to keep intact, but again, you can do anything you want to do. Okay, so now what I want to do is, let's see, I want to take this actually a little bit over. Be like that, okay? So now let's see, I'm going to take a little bit more of this color here. I'm going to add a little bit more raw umber, actually quite a bit. like that and I want to go inside now and just sort of do these things here and right here I don't want to cover this whole thing up with this darker value I just kind of want to place it on the edge right here see that like that and bring that down and then just sort of fade this out like that. See that? Very little pressure on my brush. I can even use my finger and do something like that. See how that just gives it a nice blend and some realistic shadow play like that. See something like this? And this is where I can really bring out these lines now and give this a nice look to it. Okay, something like that. Alright, so again, I'm going to come in here play this around. kind of do something like this, yeah? Okay, and sort of run this shadow out, yeah, like this. Okay, something like that. And now, without cleaning, I'm going to take a little bit of this raw umber, a touch of phthalo blue. Again, that's our darkest value in this painting. That makes essentially black. Okay, like so. And All right, something like this. And I'm going to come in here now, and I really just want to use the edge of the brush very, very carefully. I just want to get in between some of this stuff like this. See that? Make these nice separations. And sort of do some things like this. Okay, something like that, and okay. 
Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn my picture because I can. <laughs> I'm not going to fight this wrist battle here. I'm not even going to play that game. I'm just going to do this and say like that. See that? Easy, easy peasy. Nice and enjoyable. Don't need to fight. Don't need to struggle. There is no reason in the world, especially with acrylics, why anybody should have to fight stress or struggle ever. Because seriously, acrylics is like the most forgiving, I think, art I've ever done. It is super, super duper. It's just, it's, it's so, it allows you to do anything. Let's see, getting that. Okay, so these kind of things, yeah, like that. Now what I want to do is I want to clean that up just a little bit here in the shadow area. And I also want to brighten up some of the highlight areas on the very outskirts of this underneath part here. So again, with my number 12 flat brush and cleaning it off. And just keeping it damp but not soaking wet because, of course, I don't want to have the paint run off. But I want to lay it down and not create a bunch of gaps and holes that i got to wait to dry and fill in later. Because if you've ever done that, you know that that can be kind of like, ugh. But we don't need to, ugh. <laughs> and so uh, let's, let's go like this. I'm going to take a little bit of this green now hue to it. And I'm going to see if I can come up with... Maybe some kind of a off, but maybe a color like this, yeah? Okay. And let's see what happens here if I kind of go over some of this like that, yeah. Let's get a little bit more raw umber into that, maybe. Okay, just want to dull that down more or less. I don't really want to darken this. I just want to dull it because I want to keep that color alive. And I just kind of want to show it in the shadow where it changes just a little bit. Okay, so kind of get some of that mud out of there. And... Knock some of it back because I do want some of it involved because it does show shadow play in that way, but um, I don't want it to take over too much, if that makes sense. See, just kind of something maybe like that. Okay, again, not going to fight the wrist battle. Let's turn my canvas. All right, now one more time, let's go into some phthalo, I'm sorry, not phthalo, anything. Raw umber, I'm just gonna take raw umber without cleaning my brush. And I'm just gonna take and go back in and reestablish these little lines here. And that way it doesn't look so washed out or whatever. Mm. 
Okay. I don't think it's something like that. See, we got a little shadow play going on there now. I'm going to clean my brush. And with that... I'm going to take now and... I'm going to take some titanium white. Just a touch of that yellow here. Mostly titanium white. I'm going to go in here now and this is going to really show some really bright highlight there. So just like that. Okay, I think it's a little bit too much, too white. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this cream color, a little bit more white. Okay, and there we go. It adds a little bit of that color back in. Okay, just like that, just going back over. See, you can always adjust your colors, all good. No big deal. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yellow straight up and I actually want to get a little bit more of that cad yellow involved to warm it up a bit more and I actually want to go in here and go over these lines because between these shadows here I want to show that there's that they're hitting in the light so if I have them the same color as over here it doesn't really distinguish too well on that shadow versus the light area here so I want to take and put this yellow hue in in between them like this see like that and those will see these will be my separators as far as this goes anyways See something like that. Okay, yeah, see? I like that better. That is right, right, right. Okay, and so with this, I'm just going to strike just some of this like that, just some of it, not all of it, see kind of like that, so it looks like it's really going up into the shadow area a little bit more, playing this in, see like that. So something like that. Okay. 
There it is. I can adjust that if I want to. All right, so now I want to take, again, some of this, some of that burnt umber. A little fly there, buzz off. <laughs> All right. Okay, like that. See, I want to just sort of settle some of this down a bit. something like that yeah okay it's kind of settling that back a bit Just throwing some of this in just a little bit. Okay, just so see, just kind of playing these values back and forth and adding them back in, blending them out, adding another layer, you know, fading them out again. And each time, again, it just gets better and more realistic this way. Acrylics will never give you the final draw, usually, on the first time, first layer. It's just not the way they're made and not how they're meant to be. So, anyways, I'm going to go with this, and I think that I can move on. So, I've got my number two flat brush here, and I'm going to go in here with... I'm going to go in here with some of this titanium white, mostly titanium white to that blue turquoise hue that I made. And I'm going to just strike some of this highlight stuff down here and just kind of with my number two flat brush here. Kind of something like that, you know. Okay, so something like this around some of these. See that? It just, I know it seems pretty mundane, but I tell you, these little details, they add up and it really just comes together to bring more interest to the eye over time. The more you do stuff like this and add these little things, it just makes all the difference, I think. So kind of like something like that, maybe. I don't know. A little something, but not much. All right. So, now. Whoa. I'm going to go back to my number 12. Well, actually, no. You know what? the back. I'm going to go back to my number 14 flat brush. It's a little bit bigger. I can cover more ground. I'm going to do the stem now. And I'm going to take this pile of paint finally here now. Load that up pretty good. And I'm just going to block him in. Just going to bring it right up to the edge with the edge of the flat brush. Oh, I'm just like that. And I'll come down like this. OK. 
Okay, and I recommend doing the, uh, the, the edge of the brush instead of going like this because it tends to go out of bounds too much when you push too hard. But like this, you can really control the edge very well where you want it to stay and where you want that to be. So just a little tip there when you're filling stuff in. Kind of stay in your lines a little bit better. Okay, and of course we'll adjust, I'll adjust these, uh, these colors here on the stem to show shadow and light and all those things. But again, base color first, like always. With acrylics, you always want a base color before you start adding lights and shadows and details. Because you really want something to give the paint to pop off of and work with. And more or less build a platform for it to do its thing. Because in a way, well, not in a way, but it, it's, it does, it supports uh, the effects that way when you have a base color before you attempt to do anything else with this. So, I recommend always a base color first for that reason. And I don't know if you guys can hear the rain in the background. It rains quite often in Hawaii where I live and it's been raining pretty much all day. It rains, like I said, quite a bit to the point where it's very lush and a lot of plants and jungle and crops grow very well here because of that. So definitely an inside day for painting for me today. No beach day today. No putting up my solar panels like I was going to, but it's okay, I can wait for the rain. I don't really feel like getting shocked or slipping off my roof <laughs> while it's raining out I'm trying to do that. So I thought today would be a good day to paint for sure. down on this. I'll go around this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to take a little bit of this raw umber now and I'm going to go into my color that I just made here, a little bit more raw umber. Okay, something like that. And of course we got to have a shadow. And something like that. Okay, very, very, very light pressure as I come down. And I'm going to wipe the rest of the paint off my brush onto my tablecloth. Okay, so as I get down, very little pressure on the brush. See, just like that, it's just going to fade down. Just like that. Okay. And also down here, see heavier pressure and I can lay more paint down. It gets around these things here. And then I'll just have that again fade up. This is something like that. And I'm going to actually take a little bit more raw umber. And I'm going to go dark. A little darker right where the stem and the cap meet. 
just to show the realistic nature of shadow play how that would really be that way in real life there see like that and then I'll wipe the rest of all that paint off the brush and now what I'm going to do is just drag this down and have it fade down into the stuff I already did here see just like that see that very realistic See, just like that. Isn't that nice? And now what I can do is actually take a little bit more of this color. And I can put that right back up into here. Even with that raw umber still left on my brush. And it brings that color together with this shadow play. And in turn that makes it more realistic and natural looking. So just like that, like that, nice. Okay, and in the same way, I want to take this raw umber, I want to do the same thing down here. I want to take and really darken this area up down here. See where it really gets down to the bushes here and into the foliage. All that shadow is going to be playing off of it. And of course, as I get up here into the stem away from all that, I'm going to use lighter pressure on my brush so that this original color can take over. See, just like that. And boom. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush now. Now take some titanium white, and I'm going to go into that same color. A little bit more white really lighten that up and I'm gonna go in the center here where the lights really hitting it and I'm just gonna sort of do this so you just sort of brush that out and I don't want to take it all the way to the edge because I don't want to lose my dimension so I'll just go like this. See, so just like that, just kind of work it up in there. Work this down a little bit. Okay, just kind of something like that. And that just sort of zings it out, <laughs> sort of like that. I like that. That's uh, different value changes really playing it up. Playing it up and changing it up. All right. Get some of this. Okay, something like that. Oh good, and you got these little things, maybe some little holes and gaps, kind of shows a little, maybe a little texture on there. Alright, now, let's make this guy shine and pop. I love this part. This is where it gets really sweet. I am going to take my smaller flat brush here, and pure titanium white. Just pure titanium white. Okay, I'm gonna go like that. And let's go in here and start filling in some little things here. Just kind of fade some of that off, maybe, yeah. some of these foliage things, some of the sky show through maybe, where the light's really hitting it, making it pop like that. And actually, you know what? Before I get any further, I apologize, I'm actually going to take a little bit of this matte medium, and this is going to be what makes my color transparent. 
And it's also going to give me that really gloss shine look to it. So check this out. I'm going to go into some of this and some titanium white just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. And I'm going to go in here and just sort of do something like, like this. just kind of makes that transparency happen. Okay. So let's see, I'm going to go something like this. And maybe something like that. Maybe something like that. Just sort of play that around. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit more white. And I'm gonna play this here, play this there, here and there, but not everywhere. something like that. Okay, I'm going to clean my brush so I can get the matte medium off because I just want to go in there now and I want to take my smaller number two flat brush now and I want to go without the matte medium Just something like this, just direct highlights, super bright. Just something like that. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to take just some of this and mostly titanium white, some of that green hue that I made, a little bit of this matte medium now, and I want to place this direct little, I don't know, shine thing here. Maybe a little bit more running out of paint there. Okay, 
and there's also a little, little deal here where I'm going to take just some of this, some of that, some more matte medium. You can see matte medium really runs. So I'm going to go. Just kind of something like this. Uh, just kind of reflective light ring around here. I don't know. Okay. A little bit of this. All right, now I just want to take some titanium white and I just really want to make this pop and fill in some more of these little things here. So just filling in these little things here, adding more texture or adding more layers of, to, of this white. Okay, just something like that. Okay, and this more titanium white. And I can come in here and I don't want to get the whole thing. Just kind of something like that. Okay. A little bit more highlight on this.
And I kind of want to make those highlights pop just a little more. So I'm going to take some more phthalo green, ultramarine blue, a little titanium white, but not much. A little raw umber to dull that down. Maybe a little bit more blue. And just kind of in between some of this. And again, that shows more foliage and stuff happening, yeah. It's just something like that. So you can fiddle around and do this to any degree you want. But for me, I'm going to take my script liner brush, lots of water, and I'm going to pull it through as I turn it and it brings it to a nice sharp point. And with that, I am going to go ahead and sign right here and I want to thank you guys so much for all your support and joining me and following along I hope this lesson finds you well and I hope that you guys find much satisfaction and that this lesson is very clear and very easy to follow let me know in the comment section down below if you guys are having any troubles or if you'd like to see something this specific or whatever questions or comments you may have. I'd love to hear from you guys. And totally go for this one. This is super simple. Anything you don't like, you can cover up. And it is a lot easier than it looks, believe it or not. So with that said, I want to thank you guys again. And don't forget to subscribe if you dig my art. And for more video lessons in the future I'll be putting out. And until next time, happy painting everyone.